So who has the best dust extractor? Construction, it's a messy business and dust is one of the biggest evils in our industry. Not only can dust be destructive to personal property, but it's also dangerous to our health. Recent OSHA regulations have highlighted just how dangerous that can be and how important it is for us as contractors to capture dust on the job site and at the source. In our latest head-to-head -head tool testing, we evaluated eight of the industry's top dust collectors. And we looked at ranges or capacity sizes between eight and 12 gallons, try to keep it in the same range. The lineup of dust extractors included Bosch, DeWalt, Fine, Festool, Hilti, Makita, Metabo, and of course Milwaukee. And guys, if you're looking for more information that I'm providing in this video, more in-depth information, then you absolutely have to go to the website toolboxbuzz.com and read the article. I will link to that article down below in the video description to make it easy for you guys. But in that article, there are more details, charts, graphs, and a ton of photos, but more details, and I explain a lot more stuff. We explain more stuff in that. So for this head-to-head, -head, we looked at six major categories. The first category was an air volume CFM test. This tests the airflow volume of a unit in cubic feet per minute. The test was conducted twice, once with a clean set of filters and a fleece bag, and again with a dirty filter and fleece bag. Second test we looked at was suction, and that's Everybody knows the water column test, right? That's a sexy test. The suction test provides a relative measure of the motor's suction power. We also tested the suction with a suction meter um, to compare, compare the results and also to check on the water column test. The test was conducted twice, again clean, and later with dirty filters and fleece bags. Third test, air watts. Air watts is a calculated standard measurement used in the vacuum industry. Um, it is uh, probably the best indicator of the overall relative power and efficiency of these units because it takes into consideration both the water column and the CFM factors. So air watts was calculated for both clean and dirty filters and fleece bags. We did this twice as you can as you're seeing. The fourth test was noise, decibels. Decibel measurements including average and maximum value under high load were measured. Um, fifth category was cost and we basically we took online or our costs from online sources and we compared them. We put them in charts for you guys to look at and compare. Sixth was ergonomics and features. Huge category. We looked at a ton of features and ranked each vacuum in these categories, which included anything from caster wheels to the mechanism of the hose attachment, we're pulled out or not, ease of controls, just to name a few. So testing round one, it involved, um, we did the machines clean. So we tested the dust extractors out of the box as a baseline clean, clean filters, clean dust bags, um, and, and ran them through these tests. Guys, it's important to note something here, and I just want to break away from the head-to-head -head for a second. In our testing and on the job site, we use fleece filter bags uh, for safety and also to prevent premature clogging of the pleated filter, the more expensive filter in the vacuum. Fleece filter bags are less expensive to use and replace than the vacuum pleated filter or HEPA filter, and using filter bags drastically reduces your exposure to vacuum contents. And I'm talking about things like silica, lead paint, and other harmful dust particulate. Fleece bags improve the lifespan, the lifespan of both standard and HEPA filters and protects the vacuum motor. Uh, they also offer a massive cost savings over the course of a year or lifespan of your vacuum unit. All right, back to testing round two. We, um, in round two of the testing, we put the dust collectors, basically we sucked up uh, 20 pounds of drywall compound before performing all the same measurements and calculations again. We constructed like a joist bay and, and we measured it and screeded the dust compound. But basically the test showed the potential performance in a real application. So the test measurements, one of the key reasons to develop a head-to-head -head for dust extractors is to develop or to objectively measure the relative differences in performance. 
Makes sense, right? Well, Toolbox must carefully research how to best derive these measurements. There's a lot of stuff on the internet now, guys, and some of it's inaccurate. Our goal was to create a series of measurements that accurately depicted the unit performance. Our research led us to the industry standard of AirWatt as the objective criteria for overall unit performance as this unit of measurement is basically dependent on both pure suction, which we measured in um, inches of water column, and airflow, which we measured in cubic feet per minute, where CFMs, basically. So basically, uh, guys, an, an air watt is a measurement of unit of the effectiveness of the vacuum, which relates to the which relates to the relationship between the airflow produced, the suction, and the amount of power or watts a vacuum cleaner produces and uses. So to um, the formula that we use to complete or compute the air wattage was calculated using an ASTM international standard. It's ASTM F558-13. The details of this formula and how we uh, are explained in detail in the Toolbox Buzz article and are basically too confusing and a little bit boring to explain here in the video. So I'm not even gonna go into it, but read the article if you wanna see how we got this formula going. But this formula and our testing methods, it basically enabled us to calculate the air watt for each dust collector. Uh, we looked at air volume measurements, CFM, we made a jig. Um, to accurately measure the air volume, the flow going through those dust collectors, we used a commercial Dwyer hot wire anemometer. This measurement device has a basically has a probe in the airstream that has two openings. And in one opening there's a temperature sensor, and in the other opening, there's a very, very small wire that gets heated up by the device, and it's powered by the device in the anemometer. As the air flows over that heated wire and cools the wire, additional power is then supplied to keep that wire at a constant temperature. The additional power needed directly correlated to the airflow over the wire. So we basically constructed a jig, it was a traffic cone, uh, an orange traffic cone, to hold the anemometer probe in the center of the airflow to consistently test our units. We then took CFM measurements after each unit had run for 90 seconds. This runtime allowed us, or I should say it allowed the anemometer to reach a steady state and allowed the anemometer time basically to calculate and record the average recordings that we were looking for. And we we're looking for a CFM on that time scale. Um, the nearby decibel meter you might see in the video here um, had a stopwatch feature and that's how we were, stayed consistent with the time for the 90 second period, but also for our uh, for CFMs, but also for our decibel readings. We took 90 second decibel readings. Let's talk about that water column jig, because that's a sexy jig we built. We had fun building it. Uh, it measures static power, which is suction, and we both used the water column, but also an industrial gauge that registered um, up to 200 inches of water column for our water column test. The water column test is much more visual of a suction, so it's a great way to show you guys the relative suction of these collectors and how they, how they compared. Not as sexy as the gauge, but we did use the gauge to calibrate and confirm the water column readings. Um, like I said, not as sexy. Uh, the water column was constructed, it has a clear two inch PVC water column that visually indicates the suction power by, by basically colored water rising up. It's a measurable scale that we calibrated and put on the side. Uh, we marked the maximum water column readings on the PVC column with, with um, you know, label makers with tape that indicated the unit name and the test that it was being run for clean or dirty. The units were tested uh, with the manufactured supplied hoses and were, uh, we coupled them to the column, the water column with airtight rubber compression fittings. We also used the industrial gauge that I mentioned earlier to measure the unit suction and to cre create a second set of readings. And we did this to ensure that we were getting a good correlation between the two tests. I want to make sure we were accurate for you guys. Uh, decibels. I just mentioned it earlier, but we did, we measured decibels on each unit during the CFM testing. We placed a decibel meter in the same location, it was on a tripod, for each vacuum. We taped the floor, it never moved. And we measured the average and maximum decibel levels. Measurements were recorded both when the vacuums were clean and when dirty with drywall compound. They were running a little high and, and working hard. 
uh, airflow volume results. <clears throat> the measured airflow in CFMs is both shown in the chart that we show is, is both shown clean and dirty dust extractors after sucking up those 20 pounds of drywall compound. For the clean condition, the top three vacuum winners were Hilti at 172.2 CFMs, Festool, number two, at 159.5 CFMs, and DeWalt at 153.4 CFMs. In the second test, we ran it through with dirty fleece bags and filters. The top three were Makita, number one, at 134.2 CFMs, Festool again at 129.7 CFMs, and Hilti at 111.7 CFMs. Um, what's quite glaring in the results is the dramatic or drastic drop of the DeWalt uh, from third place to eighth last place, basically. Um, measurements. So let's talk about that water column results because that was a fun test, like I said. The measured suction water column in inches is shown in our chart for both clean and dirty dust extractors. Test one and round two, test two. Um, and again, we did it after we sucked up 20 pounds of drywall. We measured that drywall, uh, we screeded it, every vacuum te uh, was treated the same. Um, for the top three in the clean suction test was Hilti at 97.8, Festool got number two, 96.3, and Makita, number three, at 93.4 inches. Um, after sucking up the drywall compound, the top three remain the same. Hilti was 99.4 inches, Festool number two at 97.5, and then coming in at third place was Makita at 91.5 inches. Interesting enough, both Hilti and Festool recorded slightly higher suction values when they were dirty in the dirty test. Um, statistically, there really isn't much difference between the first and second test for those two vacuums, but it was, it was interesting to see nonetheless. Uh, DeWalt struggled in this test and um, was probably, well, it was, it was significantly lower than the rest of the vacuums. Air watts, the air watt results. The top three vacuums in the clean condition tests were um, Hilti, Festool, and uh, Makita. Hilti was 1986 air watts, Festool was 1801 air watts, big difference there, and Makita 1653 air watts, another big difference. Um, the results were suck, the results after we sucked up the 20 pounds of drywall was uh, Festool at 1483 at number one, Makita at 1440 number two, and then Hilti followed three, third place at 1300. Um, Again, we saw uh, DeWalt drastically fall off, <laughs> fall off the charts, and this is due to the struggle in the suction testing, basically. Um, both Bosch and Milwaukee dropped about 40% when we went from the clean testing to the dirty testing, which is something you should consider when evaluating this data. Uh, let's talk about the noise results. Decibels, so we recorded the average decibel levels um, along, like I said earlier, I said we did average and maximum values. So the top three vacuums were number one Makita at 76.3 decibels and they peaked at 83. Milwaukee had 79.8 decibels peaking at 84 and Metabo. Metabo came in third and they had 80.6 decibels and they peaked at 89.4 decibels. Uh, it's worth noting that there isn't much of a, a very big difference in the decibel levels across eight, vac eight of the vacuums that we tested. Uh, cost. Cost, um, what we did is we basically used the internet. We did some internet test um, searching for costs. Cost is always a factor when determining which tool to buy. We get it, guys. We know that money makes, it, money makes things go around. Uh, both DeWalt and Makita ring in the lowest at $529, which is almost half the cost of the highest price Hilti at $949. It's worth pointing out, though, that the total cost may be a bit deceiving, and that's especially because the companies like Hilti and Festool offer robust warranties. Hilti offers a 20-year limited warranty and a two-year wear and tear warranty, and Festool offers a full coverage for three-year warranty. Um, look, both are significantly uh, longer warranties than any other tool manufacturer. So you gotta think about that stuff when you're weighing costs. While we're not going to dig into the details of the warranties here, I just want you guys to look at it when considering total cost of ownership. Um, the last category we looked at was ergonomics and features. And 
ergonomics are critically important when considering any new tool. For, in fact, I think it's sometimes the most important, but for this evaluation, we included a long list of features in our ergonomic evaluation. So you wanna look at the chart, I'm gonna post it in a second, but the chart covers all of these items, and our team of contractors basically rated each of the features on this chart from one to three for each extractor, with one being the best score and three being the lowest score. Good, better, best. The average score across the category is then used to rank these dust extractors with the top three being um, Fine, Milwaukee, and then Bosch. So Fine got a score of 1.24, Milwaukee 1.53, and Bosch came in. Bosch actually tied uh, with Hilti and Metabo, I should say, and they tied with a score of 1.7. Lastly, we picked an overall winner. So the question is, who has the best dust extractor? Well, the Toolbox team, we basically developed a ranking system, which assigns a number uh, one for the winner of each category up to the number of entries. In this case, there were eight um, dust extractors, so one to eight is what we used. Each category is then added up, and the tool with the lowest score was the winner. So we looked at all of those tests that we did, and as usual, the top three tools were very close, and rightfully so. They are all excellent dust extractors. First place winner, Hilti. Coming into first place is, and what we consider probably the actual best dust extractor in the market today is the Hilti. It's their VC, it's their model number VC50-10XE. And while it is probably the most expensive dust extractor to buy, it's, it was the most expensive, it offers excellent power and it comes with excellent warranty that is tough to beat in the industry. The second best vacuum in the industry is Makita. Coming in at second place, Makita, model number VC4710. And um, look guys, the Makita tied um, for the least expensive dust extractor we tested. So it's the most reasonably priced. Uh, it's an extreme value for contractors on a tight budget. And basically it held its own with Hilti and Festool in the, in the performance testing that we did. It is also probably, it also won the quietest dust extractor, so it's better on the ears. And there's no doubt that this is a top-notch dust extractor with a price that's tough to ignore. Um, third place winner. The third place winner in our testing was Festool. No surprises there. Uh, that's, that's model 584-014. And um, look, Festool has been a leader in dust control for years. And so it's no surprise to see them on top of this list, at least not for me. Uh, also, priced on the higher side compared to the other models we tested, it too offers an exceptional warranty that is gonna keep you guys working worry-free for three years. That's important to me. Uh, this dust extractor was very consistent in the performance testing. Um, it boasted the best air watt measurement in the dirty filter testing, which means it's gonna work great when, when the bag is filling up for you. Here's my final thoughts, guys. Recent OSHA regulations, they're changing the way we work, right? The, the silica rule that came out, that rule basically affects two million construction workers who drill, cut, crush, or grind silica-containing materials such as concrete and stone as well as the general construction operations such as um, brick manufacturing foundries and hydraulic fracturing. Guys, we know that there are a lot of other folks out there reviewing tools and giving you tool information. And we also know that your time is limited on where you go to learn about these tools. We're pros speaking to pros. We use these tools, these vacuums, on real jobs just like you. Whether we're talking about a tool or we're working with a tool, the same things apply to us too. Quality matters to us, reputation matters, matters to us on our job sites, but also with you. Being safe and getting it done, it all matters. I, I sincerely hope that this head-to-head -head testing that we developed clears up some of the confusion that's out there on the website, because not all of it's accurate. And I, I hope that it helps you pick which dust extractor is best suited for what you do. So please, 
leave a comment because I absolutely want to hear what you guys are thinking. And of course, please give us a thumbs up and subscribe to this channel because we need your support. I'm Rob Robler. We'll see you at the next head-to-head -head testing. Take care.